All right, this is a uh, worksheet 20. We talk about measures of relative position and box plot. So in this section, we'll discuss different ways to compare, so, uh, emphasis and compare data values within the data set uh, and how to graphically represent the distribution. So let's see, the first topic, measures of relative position. So basically you're competing on a new video game tournament and you scored 147 points. So you're thinking, wait, is it a good score or not a good score compared to other players? So when we talk about comparison, like comparing data set, data values, like I got 147 and then I'm like, is it a good score or bad score? One way to kind of think about it is compare, like why don't I compare it to other people? So the answer to is it a good score or not? Well, it kind of depends on other players, right? So measure of relative standing or rel relative position tells us how high or low a given number is compared to compare to other numbers in the data set. That's why it's called measure relative position or rel measures of relative standing. So if you're in a situation where it's like, I don't really care my point 147 per se, I care more about did I do better than others or not, then now we're talking about relative standing. So there are some cases that that's more important than the actual score. So here we're gonna talk about like ranking because ranking kind of tells you that story. Okay, so there are two re uh, measures of relative standing or me relative position that we're gonna learn in this section. The first one is z-score and then we'll talk about percentile. So first, like the z-score here. Z-score is a number that tells us the number of standard deviation. I'm being lazy, I'm just writing STD. EV for standard deviation above or below the mean. So basically I'm comparing my number against the average. So did I do better than the average or did I do worse than the average? If the Z scores, and then Z score basically tells you that, if the Z score of a given number is positive, then it is above the average. If the Z score is negative, then the given number is below the average. Below the mean. If the Z score is good to zero, then the number is exactly equal to to the mean. The usual range of z-score is between negative 2 and positive 2. So higher the z-score, more above mean you are, and more negative z-score you have, more below the mean you are. So how do we actually calculate the mean? So to calculate, I mean z-score, to calculate the z-score of a given number, so z-score is take the number, take your score, subtract the mean, and then you divide that by standard deviation. So this tells you how much standard deviation above or below you are compared to the mean. All right, let's see, let's look at number one. Suppose that you have, you score, so kind of same example. So because you scored 147 on the video game, you also notice the average score was 120. So already I'm looking at it, it's like, oh, I did better than the average. So how well above average am I? So I'm going to have to kind of look at the standard deviation. So standard deviation was given as 12.8. So calculate the z-score of your video game. So z-score of 147 will be, take that number. So I'm looking at the formula here. Take your number x, subtract the mean, and divide that by standard deviation. So my number is 470, uh, 147. I'll subtract 120 and divide that by standard deviation of 12.8. So when I have fraction like this, I'm gonna put the parentheses around because that's how you calculate first. So that'll be 27 over 12.8. And as a result, I get 2.109. Uh, I round it off. Interpret the result. Are you above or below average? How above or below average are you? So first of all, I'm above the average. Right? So I knew that already, but if I look at my answer, my z-score is positive, so that's above average. My z-score happened to be two point something something, so I'm about two standard deviation above the mean. So not only I know I'm above the average, but I know I'm two standard deviation above the average. So that's pretty good score. As I mentioned before, usually your z-score should come out to be somewhere between negative and two positive two, here we are slightly over positive two, so that means it's pretty high up there. So that means that's pretty good score. 
right let's see I'm gonna have you pause and look at number two I'm gonna have you calculate that for me and once you're done with number two let's look at number three number three is more uh, like a concept question so John's test score is 0 0.94 Susie's is negative 0 0.3 so here I just know so I don't even know what they got actually on the score but all I know is their z-score I can still see who did better than other so I can say here John did better John better because he is almost one standard deviation above the average because his number is posi almost positive one whereas um, Susie is below the average because Susie's number is negative okay all right let's look at the next percentile so this is another way to compare your number against other people in your data set so a percentile another measure of relative standing is the percentile the kth percentile so it could be like 20th percentile 40th percentile 90th percentile is a number that separates the bottom uh, bottom k percent from the top 100 minus k percent why is it 100 minus k because if it's bottom 30 percent that means it's top 70 because the whole thing is 100 percent if it's bottom 20 percent then it's top 80 because 100 minus 20 will be 80 so basically imagine that the data set is divided into 100 parts so i'm going to put data into 100 groups so each group is basically a percent right so the kth percentile is where the kth group ends basically so that's where it separates if i arrange them in order basically this is where it ends it separates the bottom kth percent to the top 100 minus kth percent for example 30th percentile is a number that separates the bottom 30 percent from the top 70 percent higher the percent higher the score right so if you're 90th percentile your number is pretty big that means your number is bigger than 90 percent of other people and is only less than 10 percent of the people so like in terms of like a, if i kind of want to look at visually it's going to look like zero percentile to 100 percent this is all your data set imagine they're distributed like this Zero percentile will be the smallest number. It's called the minimum. Hundred percentile means it's bottom hundred percent. That means like everyone's score is lower than you. That means you have the highest score. It's called the maximum. Right. So fifty percentile is basically half. So that means fifty percent is less than you. Fifty percent is bigger than you. So that means you're exactly half. In the previous section, we learned that there's a median, right? So this is also called median. 25 percentile is here so this is kind of like I just want you to kind of have an idea of 0 percentile is the lowest number 25 percentile 25 percent is basically like a quarter right so then 50 percent 75 percent if I had 30 percentile it'd be somewhere here uh, percentile so you have an idea of what that means so 30 percentile is somewhat lower than 50 percent right so that's not the highest score, but it's not the lowest score, somewhere here. So this kind of gives you graphical representation of where the percentiles are. All right, let's move on to the next working with the percentile. So how do you actually calculate the percentile? So to work with the percentile, we work with the ranking of the element. So to see my number is higher or lower, you basically have to rank everyone in increasing order, right? So suppose you have a list of n many numbers. Right? So it could be 100 numbers, it could be 1,000 numbers, whatever. So arranged in an increasing order. Right? So number that means element rank number 1 is the lowest number, and the element num number n is the highest number. Right. So if you rank number 1 here, because we are arranging in an increasing order, you're the lowest, you have the lowest number. If you rank number n, then you have a highest number. Okay, from there, we can find the kth percentile or we can find the percentile of a given number. So 
Some question is going to be, oh, find the 40th percentile. So I can go from there to find it. Or some, I can say, oh, what's my percentile? Then I can calculate that also. So to find the percentile of a given number, so you took the exam or you took the game and you got the score, how do you find your percentile? Basically, we have to divide the rank, uh, rank of the given number and divide that by n, right? So convert it to percent, then we have a percentile. So if you're ranked number 10 out of 100 people, so basically it's 10 divided by 100, it gives you 0 0.1, which is basically 10%. So you're 10 percentile. Uh, to find the kth percentile of a given data set, first you convert k into decimal. So let's say I want to find 30th percentile. So what I do is I'll convert 30% into decimal, which is 0 0.3, multiplied by n, which is how many people you have. That gives you the rank of the number you're looking for. Okay. Let's look at some examples here. Let's look at number four. Let's say Andy scored higher than 100, 429 players and lower than 115 players. So, so visually, Andy's got to be... See, Andy did better than a lot of people. You know, he's not the top player, but there's only 115 players who did better, but 429 players did worse. So Andy's to the right side. So I'll put Andy here. So that means there are 429 players and then 115 players, right? So here, Andy is ranking 430, right? And then their total number of N is, okay, 429 plus 115 plus Andy, so that'll be 545. So how do I find the percentile of a number? He says, find the ranking so we need to find the rank of a given number and divide by n. So n this rank is 140, divide that by n, which is going to be 545. So 430, so this is n this rank. And then n, big n is 545, this is my n. So that's 0.7889, so I'll just round off 79%. So so basically, Andy is 79th percentile, okay? So that's pretty high, as we kind of expected, okay? So 50th percentile is right in the middle. He's almost 80th percentile, so that means he did better than like almost 80% of the population, and only 20% of the population did better than him. All right, let's look at the next question. So 598 players competed in a game. How would you find 10th percentile? How would you find 90th percentile? So, 10 percentile, so it's go a 598 times 0 0.1 is 59.8. So this is about 59. So basically what we're doing is that we need to find, need to find rank, person with the rank number 59, okay? So here, the fifth, uh, 10 percentile is not 59, 59 is not the score. This is like rank of this person. So I have to go ask this person, hey, what score did you get? So whatever this person tells me, then this is gonna be the 10 percentile. So we need to find the rank percentile's score. All right, let's look at the next question. Oh, 90 percentile. So 598 times 0 0.9 is 538.2. So I can do 538, 539 is fine in the race. So we need to find to find a person with the rank number 538. So rank is pretty high. That means this person has a pretty high score. So this person's score, this person's score. So if this is like a video game, I don't know what this person has, but that's what the person I'm going to ask. Hey, what score did you get? So 1,000, 2,000, whatever that is, is the... 90 is the percentile. Okay. Uh, let's look at the next question. Which value is higher? 24th percentile, 83rd percentile. This, this number is bigger than this. Higher percentile means you have a higher score as well. Okay. Now let's look at the quartile. Quartile is just an extension of uh, percentile. The quartiles are just a special case of percentile. The quartile split the data into four parts instead of 100 parts. Uh, 
and then each part contains basically 25% of the data set. So the first quartile, Q1, separates bottom 25% to the top 75%. This is equivalent to the 25th percentile, right? So I could have just called it 25th percentile, but they say usually you see first quartile. So same thing for the second quartile, it separates bottom 50%. So 25, 25, so second quartile means 25, 25, so that's 50% from the top, 50%. This is equivalent to 50th percentile. Then as a measure of center, this is also the median. Because median is basically kind of with the same thing. For the median, we arrange people and then we pick the person in the middle. So that means half of the data set is lower and half of the data set is less, higher. That means 50% data set is lower and the 50 positions there is a higher to so it splits bottom 50 to the top 50 so this is the same thing so second quartile can be called 50th percentile or it can be called median they're the same thing all right let's get the third oh i said first this should have been third this should have been also fourth sorry about that so third quartile q3 separates so third quartile means quarter 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 so that's 25 25 25 so that's 75%, so bottom 75% to the top 25%. This is equivalent to 75 percentile. Right? And then fourth quartile is four quarters, 100, 25, 25, 25, 25. It's 100 from the top 0%. Okay, This is equivalent to 100 percentile. Well, if your number is higher than 100% of other people, basically you're the tallest. I mean, you're the highest number, which is just the, the largest. Uh, Number, sometimes it's called a maximum, right? Hmm. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have you pause, and work on number seven. And once you do number seven, that will meet back at the box plot. All right, so after you're done with number seven, a box plot. Box plot is a graphical representation of a five summary statistics to illustrate the distribution of the data set. So this is gonna combine what we just talked about previously. Uh, it divides data into four parts. So again, like, oh, didn't we kind of do that for quartiles? Because each quartile is 25%, then there are four quartiles. That's exactly correct. Uh, so it divides, so for the box plot, it divides data into four parts where each part contains 25. So basically it's quartiles, right? So these are five numbers we need. Minimum, which is high, the smallest number, Q1, 25 percentile, Q2, which is the same as the media, Q3, and the maximum, which is 100 percentile, right? So how do you construct the box plot? So first, you draw a number line just to kind of scale it. You draw a number line, and even you mark the numbers on it. Make sure that range of numbers include the minimum and the maximum, because our data value ranges from the minimum to the maximum. So when I draw the graph number line, I want to make sure it contains the minimum and the maximum. Uh, mark dot on the top of minimum and the maximum. Uh, draw a short line uh, to indicate Q1, Q3, Q4, uh, Q2, and Q3. So these are middle three numbers, right? So minimum max are the, the smallest and largest. Q1 to 3, these are the middle numbers. So middle numbers, they're going to be a box. Draw a short horizontal line on top of Q1, Q2, Q3. Connect them to make a box. Okay, that's what's happening in third step. And draw, draw a line from the box to the minimum, maximum, these lines are called whiskers. So, let's see. So box is gonna look something like this, right? Again, it depends on what the numbers are. So this is gonna be minimum, maximum, Q1, Q2, Q3. So I pick the minimum, I pick the maximum. Part three says horizontal line on Q1, Q3, Q2, so Q1, Q2, Q3, connect the dots, connect those lines to form a box, and then the last step is draw a line out to the minimum and maximum. So let's actually look at the question here. Uh, professor has 40 students. After quizzing the quiz, she had uh, summarized the five measure, five summary statistics, draw a box plot. Okay, so first I'm gonna draw a line. So here, they say I make sure I include the minimum and the maximum. Minimum is three, maximum is 20. 
So maybe I can go from 0 to 20. So I can contain 3 and 20, right? I don't want to go from 0 to 10, then how is it going to cover 20? So, so I'm going to go from 0 to 20, right? And then it says I have to evenly distribute my numbers. So I want to make sure like the halfway is 10. And then halfway of there is 5, half of there is 15. So I want to make sure my numbers are evenly This is like this is 5. Then I have to go by 5 each, right? It's like this. 5, 10, 15, 20. If I drew something like 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, and 20, that's not going to work because it's like, how is this 1? Then now 2 is like this, only this much. And then like, so if this is 1, this has to be 1 like all the time, right? So this will be not a good graph because my scale is all messed up. So this will be the correct scale. And then, so it says, draw number evenly mark. Okay, so I did that. So I did by five, make sure the range of numbers are included, good. It says mark dot on top of minimum and the maximum. So I'm gonna do that, that's the second step. So minimum is three, so zero is five here, five is here, three is about here then. So mark is, uh, three here. And then the maximum was 20, so 20 is maximum here, okay? So I did that part. And then what was the third step? It says to uh, draw a short horizontal line on top of Q1, Q2, Q3, connect that to uh, make a box. So I'm gonna do Q1, Q2, Q3. So Q1 is 12, so 12 is somewhere here. And then median is Q2, so that's 14. And then Q3 is 16, so 16 is about here. So uh, three horizontal bar, and then I'm gonna just connect them together to make a little box. That's what it's called box plot. Okay, and the last step is to draw lines from box to the minimum and the maximum. These are the whiskers. Okay, my last step. So just go connect them, connect them. So this is my box plot. Notice that like this part is longer than like this part because that's how things are distributed. So this is 25 for the, so 25% of the, so what is this, uh, uh, test scores? Quiz, quiz grades, so are from 3 to 12, and then 25% of class did between 12 and 14, and so on and so forth, right? All right, so let's look at some of the questions here. Uh, let's look at part B. What's the lowest and highest quiz score? We got that, we knew that, 3 and then 12. What's the score that separates the bottom 75% to the top? 25%, so bottom 75%, so that's 25, 25, 25, so here. So that's bottom 75 to the top 25. That's basically Q3, right? Which was 16. So I'm gonna say that's 16, this is Q3. How many students score, so next question is, so how many score uh, students more than 14 points? So 14 points is here, so more than this. So this is 25%, this is 25%, that's basically 50%. So half of the class. So we have 40 students in class. So 40 times half, which is 0.5, so that's 20 students. And let's see, the next one is, what percent of students receive less than 12 points? So 12 points is here, less than this is this much, so that's 25%. So 25% of 40 students, so 0.25 times 40 students will be uh, 10, so 10 students. Right, that's it for this question. The next question, there is a graph. I'm gonna have you finish this. Again, the interpretation of the graph is 25% of data set. So 13 is the lowest number. 23.5 is the highest number. 25% of the data is here. 25% is here. 25% is here. 25% is right here. So these are more like condensed in this part. So they ask a bunch of questions. So I'm going to have a pause and finish this question. I think that's it for this worksheet.